Warning, this content may be upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. The moment we move the car his organs are going to shift, and he will immediately die. People who work in the medical field, what was the scariest or craziest moment you've experienced while working? Warning, the last story is very brutal. During my internship, I was in the pediatric emergency and a family arrived with two children, approximately five years old. One of the brothers had accidentally fully inserted a sewing needle into the other's chest, and it was totally submerged under the skin so it required surgery to remove it. The problem was that the father was extremely religious and refused surgery. We took a chest x-ray and you could even see the eye of the needle, but the father said it was only a shadow and that God was going to heal it. It became a race against time because in successive radiographs we saw that the needle moved under the skin of the chest. Luckily we managed to convince the father and the boy entered the operating room. Former hospice nurse here. Massive pulmonary bleeding. We know it could happen, you prepare stuff for when it does happen but seeing someone basically drown in their own blood is messed up. This guy had a tumor in his lungs and it kept growing and it basically popped an artery. I just laid the guy comfortably in his bed and walked out the room when his wife screamed and I heard something wet splattering on the floor. Ran back in there, saw what was happening, grabbed a stack of dark towels and knelt down next to his bed. Send his wife out of that room. Spread out some towels but the amount of blood coming out was massive. Grabbed his hands and told him everything would be over soon. He tried to speak but there were only some gurgling sounds. I have never seen a man more afraid. Pure fear in his eyes. He was in shock after 3 minutes and dead in less than 10. Blood congeals really fast. Huge blobs on the floor and my uniform was red and sticky. I will never forget the look in his eyes and the sounds he made when he tried to speak. Neither of these are that crazy, but they're the ones that affected me the most. In the ER, a woman in her mid-twenties is brought in unconscious. She was found on the floor of a store aisle. People thought she just fainted or had a seizure. Turns out she had a massive brain bleed and was brain dead. A healthy woman just enjoying her day will never wake up, and that can happen to anyone anytime. The brother was in shock seeing his sister was breathing but gone forever. Second one. A man brought his wife to the hospital because she was acting confused. They've been married 40 or so years. Turns out she had cancer all over her body. Stage 4. Biggest problem was the brain. He asked what we could do for her. The drive had to tell him that his wife would die in about a week. There was nothing to do but make her comfortable. Watching him realize that his entire world is vanishing in 7 to 10 days was terrifying. Then we had to go in the room and tell the woman that she was dying. I don't know if anyone can fully accept that they're going to die in one week. I am an emergency department nurse and we regularly see blood, gore, and death. You have to become accustomed to it pretty quickly or you will not last long in the profession. The one thing I cannot get used to is the child abuse. Not infrequently we get infants who end up dying because of some horrific neglect or abuse. People will walk in a blue, not breathing baby and say things like, he isn't acting right. You hope it is due to abysmally low health literacy but oftentimes it is just terrible neglect. The scariest stuff isn't the gore or death, but the angry and aggressive drug addicts. They look like zombies and they have nothing to lose. Most of the time it is just threats like, I will wait for you to get off and then beat you up or I will find you and murder your family. Honestly, I have had numerous individuals tell me this. Sometimes they get violent and come at you swinging, biting, and spitting and the only thing between you and them is some tiny waif of a security guard making $12 an hour. It can get pretty gnarly. Nurses, who are just trying to help and can do very little to defend themselves, are regularly punched and kicked. We mostly just laugh about it and chalk it up to the nature of the emergency department. Okay, so, full disclosure, I'm a clerk. Yes, a simply desk jockey. That being said, I see everybody first. Every patient who enters our office, they first come to me. There was one girl being seen in one of our facilities that would stop by and chat me up from time to time. We just saw a lot of each other in passing, with me working there and with her being a regular patient. Her name? Don't know it. Reason she came in? No idea. So we're just chat buddies. Months go by. We kinda click, joke around more. Real funny girl, bright. Smiled a lot. One day she walks in, shaking. Eyes bugged out. A woman is standing behind her, obviously concerned. The girl asks me to come out from my desk so she can talk to me. She's shivering. Looks like she's not slept in days, but is wearing pajamas, disheveled hair. Sunken eyes. Classico no appearance. 
Obviously I oblige and go stand next to her. She turns to look at the woman behind her, turns back to me, leans in. She says, they're after me. They're going to take me away. That woman is trying to get me to take these pills. I need to see my doctor now. She understands. Turns out she was one of the outside patients, suffered a complete meltdown. Stop taking her medication. After I walked her up, I went to talk to the woman. She was crying, it was her mom. Horrifying to see what can happen to people. I mean, I'm no stranger, I have my problems, but I expect it of myself. To see this seemingly chipper girl do a complete 360 was scary as hell. Just remember, you never know. You never know what someone is carrying inside of them. So, be kind. As much as you can. My econ teacher used to be a firefighter and he told us a really sad story about a crash. They ended up getting a call about somebody who rolled their car on the freeway. When they arrived, their captain pulled them aside after assessing the damage and said, listen, he's pinned under that car and is split down the middle. The moment we move the car his organs are going to shift and he will immediately die. They walked up to the guy and asked him, do you have any family you'd like to say goodbye to? Everybody was crying as he told his wife and children goodbye for the last time. I am studying to be a paramedic in South Africa. While we study we work on ambulances and in hospitals etc. The first time I went into a red zone, area of high gang presence or previous known attacks on service personnel and vehicles that requires us to take a police van in with us. I didn't really think much of it. Then my elderly gentleman patient and his lady friend get in. He requires assistance walking but she, the classic hunched over lady with enormous bag, climbs in and sits down with a smile. Just as she gets comfortable, with her bag on her lap, she looks up at me, smiles and says very calmly and as a matter of fact, we should go quickly, they might shoot us. I have seen other violence, what gang shootings look like and people with a lot of physical trauma, attacks etc, but this was the scariest to me. Just the acceptance of it, as the police force in some areas like immensely and there's not much anyone can do. I don't want anyone to live like that. Not me. But my mom was a volunteer firefighter and first responder for many years while I was growing up. Craziest and scariest story she ever told me was what I call the mashed potato baby story. Fair warning, it's really messed up and sad. She still has nightmares from this. Not for the faint of heart. Here we go. This happened in my early years of high school, so mid-2000s. My mom would get calls in the middle of the night on her radio. She didn't always go to them because she was also a paraprofessional at my school and worked the substitute para line before getting ready in the morning, so she would frequently be awake and checking messages around 5 a.m. Any call that was coded child or infant not breathing, though, had her flying out the door. Those were the ones she made sure to go to. It was the middle of the night, and her radio goes off. Beeping and chirping like nuts. Code comes out infant not breathing, address is only a couple miles from our house in Bum Egypt, across the street from a nearby lake. Dispatch doesn't always give details on calls, notably if there are kids. Mom flies out of bed to get dressed and out the door. I didn't ride along this time, even though I was awake and offered. I'm thankful I didn't. She arrives at this house. I remember passing it on the school bus and wondering who lived there, because it had a really cool, handmade gate with like, old wheel spokes, like really old metal ones that looked like wagon wheels. It also had a metal chain link fence about 6 feet tall, and a guard dog. Everybody is standing at the gate. This dog is growing and barking and very clearly not happy with visitors. Mom is getting agitated because nobody would move, and hears this call about a baby, and finally she volunteers to go over the fence. The sheriff runs over to the neighbors, manages to get someone awake and get a piece of meat, comes back, and throws it over the fence in another part of the yard to distract it. All 5 feet 3 inches of my mother scales this fence and books it like mad to the house with the deputy behind her to keep her safe. There was blood everywhere. On the walls, on the floor, on the man in the middle of the room, on a small bundle of blankets by his feet. Deputy took care of the man. I don't rightfully know how, mom doesn't remember. She says she had like, hyper focus on that bundle. Mom dropped at the blanket and slowly pulled it away. Legit, if you get squeamish or whatever, stop now. I'm gonna tell you what happened in the house leading up to the call. A young couple was renting the house. They had just had a baby together. They were also cooking meth there. The mother had run to Walmart in town to get supplies, and left the father home with the baby. The baby started crying, as they do. 
The dad was strung out as fuck and was getting angrier and angrier at this little newborn baby crying and couldn't shut it up. He grabbed it by the feet, and whipped it against the wall. Multiple times. Bits of brain matter and barely formed bone was splattered everywhere. The mom got back and found the scene. She made the call, then hit upstairs. Mom describes picking up what was left of this infant as handling a water balloon filled with mashed potatoes. She went into autopilot and started CPR, so far in shock she forgot the plastic barrier. There was no coming back from that, she knew this, but she would be damned if she didn't try. Her chief had to pull her off after about 20 minutes because she was just crying. Parents were charged with child abuse, and I think manslaughter? I'm not 100% on that. Mom had to get a hep shot because she didn't use that barrier, everyone involved had mandatory mental health screening for a while, she had terrible nightmares for a long time. Like I said, she still gets them, though they're very infrequent now. The idea of getting that upset at a crying baby has me terrified of getting frustrated with my own kids today. Just, for the love of God, if you ever get that angry or overwhelmed and you aren't on drugs, put your child down and walk away for a few minutes. It's okay to let them cry, you need to calm down first. A co-worker and I were getting a patient washed up, and as we were turning him to the side he said he felt funny and then in the next second liters and liters of blood started gushing out of his mouth and nose. I screamed for help, slammed on the code button and started compressions BC he went pulseless. In minutes the room was completely filled with staff, and I remember as I was doing each compression, more blood would leak from his nose, mouth, eyes and ears. His mom and fiancé were in the background pleading with the staff to help him, but we couldn't do anything. He had cancer and the disease had infiltrated his vascular system. All I remember is the blood everywhere, the cracking I felt with each compression and his family wailing when the physicians called it. It was my first code and I'll never forget it. Watched someone die in front of me while having dialysis. The patient started out looking super uncomfortable and within 34 minutes of CPR, an ICU consult team. The renal team, the cardio team, lots of drugs and fluids, three defibrillations, the patient was dead. It was surreal to see it happen right in front of me, but I am so glad it did because it gave me an understanding of how things can go wrong so quickly and brought the understanding you cannot save everyone. I was in the emergency department when suddenly this ambulance brought in a patient with a huge white cloth with blood stains on it, big go no sign going up in my head. Later to reveal a broken finger with blood spurting out from the artery just hanging on by a piece of skin, think nearly headless Nick from Harry Potter. Not only did we manage to secure the bleeding, the surgeon did such a great job at repairing the finger, the only aftermath from this was a scar. He regained full function of the finger, sensation and motoric function both. One of the worst things I've seen as a medical student. A patient was having essentially last resort surgery on a tumor, 50-50 chance of making it. We have a special OR that is huge that they put these kind of cases in. I don't exactly what happened, but the patient started bleeding and they couldn't get it stopped. They called me, because I was the gopher and essentially said, get everything which meant, clear the blood bank of all the compatible blood, plasma, and platelets and get here now. Here I am running through a surgical suite with essentially someone's life in my hands, dropping things along the way that other people start running with me grabbing said items. I get in the OR drop everything off and see they are now on chest compressions. There was blood all over the walls and floor. I witnessed a patient die that day. I was pretty scarred from that and I never went in that OR again. The CRNA was absolutely destroyed over it and he left shortly after even though it wasn't his fault, it was just a bad situation in that patient's time. I was a brand new paramedic, had been out of medic school for a month and just finished a couple of field training shifts and was set free on my own with a brand new EMT partner. We get called around 8 a.m. for a pediatric cardiac rest. It was my first pediatric code and my partner's first code ever. We show up on scene and find an unresponsive six-week-old baby, not breathing and pulseless. Family states the baby was crying a bunch last night and they haven't been getting much sleep. Mom and dad smoke some weed and put baby in between them in bed. Sometime during the night the baby got wrapped up in the blankets and suffocated. They woke up the next morning and found him dead. Family is going crazy and it's hard to show up and not do anything even if you know there's nothing that is going to change the outcome. So I start CPR and ask my partner to start getting stuff we need. He is just standing there frozen staring at this kid because he has a child around the same age. I use an IO in the tibia for vascular access and the kid is so small it drills through the backside and is useless. 
we end up coding the kid for 20 minutes and field terminate. Deliver the news to mom who is unable to say anything but scream. Dad takes off running down the street screaming and collapses two blocks later crying. I don't exactly remember when this one happened. I want to say it was later in my high school career, so maybe 2006 to 2007? I think this one was in the summer. Mom was up playing spider solitaire on the computer when her radio went off. She was having trouble sleeping, and went out to the porch to have a cigarette and play her game. Code was infant not breathing. I woke up to her getting dressed as the dispatch was sending the address. My room was a wall away from my parents. I didn't bother getting out of bed. I remember the door to the garage slamming, and hearing her peel out of the dirt driveway. When she arrived at the house, she was the first one there. The mother was at the door, all kinds of panicked, trying to tell her what happened. The bedroom was upstairs. The father was inside, standing over the crib, doing CPR. And here's the backstory. Get ready for the feels. They were good parents, two lovely children, nice house, sweet dog. Kids were three years, and ten months. Father had woken up in the middle of the night. He didn't know why. Something felt wrong, but he couldn't put this finger on it. He decided to check on the baby, because he didn't hear her breathing on the monitor. She had died of sudden infant death syndrome. He freaked out pretty hard. Woke up the mother to call 911 while he started CPR, praying to bring her back. She wasn't cold, but wasn't the right temperature either. They didn't know when she stopped breathing. Mom pushed him aside and started CPR herself with the plastic barrier. After a couple compressions, she noticed something felt off under her hands. Still doing compressions, she asked the father what exactly he did. He explained and showed her how he performed CPR. He used his full hands. You don't use your full hands on infants or children. He blew the baby's heart. Mom still tried, but there was nothing anybody could do. She worked on that baby for nearly an hour, praying desperately for her to wake up. Of course, she never did. Nobody had the heart to tell the father what he'd done, he was already such a mess. Mom came home in tears. I sat up with her that night. I really wanted to bring her back, but... She sobbed. It's like the biggest parent fear you could ever have. Just waking up, but your kid doesn't. I still panic when I check on mine and they're sleeping so hard I can tell right away if they're breathing, because of this story. I shadowed a doctor in a level 1 trauma center in the US several times over the course of the summer a few years ago, so I got to witness some crazy moments firsthand without any of the pressure and responsibility. A teenage girl overdosed on fentanyl, and her boyfriend dumped her on the ground outside the ambulance bay. Luckily one of the paramedics cleaning up his truck saw her, picked her up and carried her directly to the trauma room. She was apneic, cyanotic and had faint carotid pulses, she was circling the drain. They simply gave her a dose of intranasal Narcan, half in each nostril and then started bagging her with high flow oxygen and after maybe 15 seconds she came to. Violently. She was understandably shaken up. The nurse said to her you were just dead, let this be a wake up call. She was alert and oriented, but the last thing she remembered was snorting a line of heroin. That's it, cut the lights, Shannara, no fanfare or pearly gates. Kinda mess me up for a while that you could be going about your everyday routine, granted hers was heroin addiction, and the next moment your flame is snuffed out. The doc wanted to show me some different types of sutures, so he stitched up a 19 year old kid with a facial laceration and partial avulsion of his earlobe. He was homeless, and had just been walking to a friend's house when an unknown assailant robbed him at gunpoint, stole his backpack, with all his earthly possessions, and pistol whipped him until he knocked him out. I was also 19 at the time, the same age as this patient, and it forced me to recognize my privilege as someone who can shop around for careers when I could just as easily have been in this guy's shoes by a stroke of cosmic bad luck. Dude was sitting at a red light with his window down when he was robbed and struck in the face with a hammer. Docs were obviously concerned about potential head trauma or brain bleed based on the paramedics report over the radio. Patient arrives, and it turns out he's been struck with the claw side of the hammer, and it's penetrated his cheek. He has a gaping wound and all of the teeth in the top and bottom rows of the left side of his mouth are obliterated. Probably ended up needing a dozen or so oral slash maxillofacial surgeries to repair it, but he was super lucky. A woman was having a massive hemorrhagic stroke. They induced paralysis and intubated her so she'd be stable for a head CT, and they were waiting for an open OR as her condition continued downhill. No OR was available, so the neurosurgeon, who looked all of 12, came down to the trauma room, established a 
relatively, sterile field, the neurosurge nurse shaved the patient's head, and the surgeon briefly measured with a flimsy plastic ruler and mapped out a plan of attack and marker. He injected a local anesthetic that caused a huge bubble to form under her scalp, which I'd never seen anything like. Then, he drilled into her skull and when he reached the ventricle, blood gushed out of the small hole he had created. He inserted a catheter to continue draining fluid, and saved her life by alleviating the intracranial pressure that the fluid buildup was causing her. Her stats began to improve instantly, it seemed like almost as much of a miracle as the Narcan. I don't know how the woman fared, and I realize that this is one of the downsides to emergency medicine. You don't really get to wonder what happens to a patient down the road after you intervene. Once they're stable they're off to a specialist who's better equipped to observe and treat them for the long haul, and there are always more incoming patients who need your help. Was working in psych, I was the director of recreation therapy for the entire hospital. My office was off one of the wings, at the bottom of it near a day room that was hardly used, it was the geriatric unit. One day I walk out of my office for lunch, and a family is having a meeting with the social worker on that unit. As I am walking up to the front day room and exit for the unit I start to smell the unmistakable smell of human feces. I round the corner to the opening of the day room and see the young granddaughter of the PT whose family is meeting with the social worker sitting by her grandmother at the back of the day room white as a ghost and the facial expression of pure shock and horror. Her look, and the smell causes me to expect the worse, so I take a few steps forward and look in the direction this little girl's gazes. One patient is standing close to the edge, with her pants and diaper down to the ankles. There is poop everywhere. On all the chairs close to her, on the wall, on the floor, on the merry walker she is using, in her hair, in her teeth, in her clothing, on the TV stand. It is everywhere. As I watch, she is bending over and scooping slash catching slimy poop and depositing it around on all the locations I just mentioned. Yes she was eating it also. Just about everything on this lady was covered in poop. I look to the right, where the nurse's station is, and the two techs are sitting below the eye line of the desk looking at magazines. All I could muster out was, uh, ladies? They both looked up and said oh no. At the same time. They then proceeded to rush out of the nurse's station and approach the lady. She tried to greet them with open poo covered arms and hands. This caused them to freeze. At this point I left, while leaving they were doing some weird dodge attempts trying to figure out how to get a hold of her, and minimize the doo-doo contact. The nurse on the unit was watching them and shaking her head, then went back to prepping the meds that she was working on in the first place. The poor little girl was still in shock, she had a straight shot view of this older lady's plumbing section and all the action that happened from it. I can only imagine the questions she asked her parents later, most likely wondering if her grandmother was going to end up doing the same. I used to work at a residential care facility in the area catering mostly to clients with bad mental health problems and potentially dangerous behavior. Over the years working there, I had done so many restraints and got hurt so many times that I lost count. Eventually though we got a particularly troubled client. He had pretty difficult behavior in general but he was very strong and had an unusually hard head, which he would use to bash things at times when angry. One time we put him in a couch hold and I was behind him with the protective mitts we used for ethical head restraints. I wasn't paying attention closely enough and eventually, he whipped his head back and bashed me right on the nose. I knew immediately that I got a concussion, while I felt my nose was broken and I was in excruciating pain. I had to basically just stumble on over to the main staff area to ask my superior to take over. Luckily I just got a deviated septum, which I still need surgery for, but I was very traumatized by this and. My nose and right eye were dark red and purple for days and luckily, I started working somewhere else about a week later. Even after almost three years, I still remember the pain, the ugly cracking noise, and the anxiety I experienced at the time. EMT in Southern Louisiana on a basic life support unit, get called for a transfer from a hospital about two hours or so away to a hospital in my city, specifically to the burn unit. It was for a boy around one year old, maybe closer to 18 months, and he had some pretty bad burns. He was mixed, half black, half white, mom was his white half. Well mom and boyfriend broke up and she got a new boyfriend. They dabbled in the drugs, and while high on meth, they decided to wash the black color off the boy. So they filled a tub with bleach and soaked him in it. If he cried they hit him in the face. He had bruises on his face from being punched, his butt, genitalia, anus, and the bottom of his thighs. His burns were so severe that he had to be transferred to our burn unit because no other hospital close to him could handle it. 
It was the worst thing I've ever seen in two years of EMS, not that it's a long time relative to some, but it just showed me how messed up some people can be. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more videos. Click the right box for the Doctors of Reddit playlist. Let us know in the comments what you think was the worst story.